Good morning, children. Have a nice day. Welcome to Lesson 11, Transport in Modern Times, Part 2. Key points in the lesson. Number 1, Water Transport. Number 2, Air Transport. Number 3, Fossil Fuels. Number 4, Story of Petrol. So you have seen Part 1. And now I'm here with part 2 of this lesson and you're going to see all these points slowly, slowly as we move on. Water transport. Waterways are the oldest means of transport. Since olden times, Indian sailors have sailed to far away countries to spread their trade and culture. Many Roman, African and Arab merchants also visited India through waterways. There are two types of waterways, inland and overseas. India has a wide network of inland waterways in the form of rivers, canals, and backwaters. The total length of inland waterways in India is 14,500 kilometers. The waterways that move in our country, inside our country, the total length is 14,500 kilometers. It is known as inland waterways. Overseas waterways are mainly used over seas and oceans for trade and tourism. India has a long coastline of 7,600 kilo, 617 kilometers. You can see the long coastline children. There are 12 major and 185 minor ports to handle foreign trade to handle foreign trade means to do business business with other foreign countries we are we are having these major and minor seaports waterways are cheaper as compared to other means of transport they are more suitable for carrying heavy and bulky goods Heavy and bulky, very big goods. They are very suitable for it. Water transport is a fuel efficient and environment friendly mode of transport. So, it is fuel efficient. It uses proper fuel which does not create pollution. And that's why it is very good mode of transport. You can see the bulky and heavy goods here being carried by the ships. Do you know, we need a good water transport system to safeguard our long coastline and island groups in the Arabian Sea and Bay of Bengal. Very good means of transport, water transport we need in order to protect our long coastline. We are having a long coastline as you know and this has to be protected. So, this is the long coastline, children. You can see the coastline. This is the coastline of India. And through this, we are doing the international trade through this waterways. This side full is the waterways, you see, in the Bay of Bengal and Arabian Sea. To protect this, we need very good transport system. Air transport. Since early times, man has had the desire to fly like a bird in the open skies. Now, in the open skies, when man used to see the birds flying, he felt that uh, I should also fly in the sky. But 
he was unable to do so. He was able to fulfill his desire by flying in the hot air balloon. So, when man made this hot air balloon, that time he was able to fly in the sky. So, his desire got fulfilled. His wish got fulfilled. It was only in 1908 that the Wright brothers made the first successful flight in an aeroplane. So, these two brothers, Wright brothers, both of them are uh, having, means that in those days, they uh, were the first pe people who tried to make a flight, an aeroplane, and went up in the sky. And this was their aeroplane that they made in those days in 1908. Airways have shrunk distances in an amazing manner. Amazing manner means in a very surprising way today we have made the distance short. Today going to any country in any part of the world is not at all difficult. It takes 17 hours to reach Delhi from Mumbai by Rajdhani Express train. If you go to um, Delhi from Mumbai by Rajdhani Express, it takes 17 hours to reach. But only 2 hours by an aeroplane. Mumbai-Delhi air route is the busiest in the country. So, it takes only 2 hours. To reach from Mumbai to Delhi by flight, by an aeroplane. This is the route. So, don't you think that airways have shrunk distances in an amazing manner? Yes, it has shrunk distance in an amazing manner. Air travel is the fastest fastest and most comfortable but costly mode of transport. It is very fast. It reaches very fast but it is very costly. Everyone cannot afford to go in an aeroplane in the flight. You see the comfort given here. This is the comfort. Very nice and comfortable journey we have by the air travel but very very expensive to go in this mode of transport. The chief advantage of air travel is that it can cover difficult landforms like you see all the difficult uh, mo mountains, deserts, forests and water bodies eh? without any problem we can go. You see difficult landforms, mountains, deserts, then forests, water bodies, any place we can go without any difficulties. So that's why that is very good means of transport. And in other means of transport, we cannot cover these difficult landforms. In the beginning, the aircrafts were small and could fly over short distances only. You see, only short distances these uh, aircrafts could cover and they were very small. But now an aeroplane can carry hundreds of passengers and tons of cargo over great distances. Cargo means all the goods that go in the aeroplane. So there is cargo uh, aeroplanes. They are carrying tons of goods in them. So. Today, we are having the best of aircrafts. The airports provide various services like duty-free shops, restaurants, telephone and even free internet service. So, when you are waiting for your flight, at that time, if you need to buy anything, the shops are duty-free and very good restaurants, you get good eatables and the telephone service is very good and also the internet service 
You don't have to pay for it. It is free. Do you know helicopters are used for surveys, media reporting and emergency services. So even helicopters are very useful to us as they are used in uh, getting the news. The media goes to get all the news from different places and that's how we get to know so many things about different places, countries uh, and also about uh, our country and in dif different cities some difficult situation has occurred and they go and they cover that news. They are useful for transporting the injured to hospital. You see the injured are um, sent to hospital when other transport cannot reach any place then these helicopters are uh, providing this relief to the victims who uh, have been affected by the natural calamities like earthquakes, landslides, floods, cyclones and these helicopters prove very useful at that time. We need to control the use of petrol and diesel. So we are using petrol and diesel for our vehicles. We have to put a check on it. Why? Because India has to spend precious foreign exchange on importing fuel. While buying the fuel from other countries, we have to pay a big amount of money and India has to pay that. So that is the foreign exchange. When we are importing fuel, we are getting the fuel, we are buying the fuel. So that's why we have to put a control on the use of petrol and diesel. We must use CNG compressed natural gas as fuel. It is environment friendly. So and uh, now the day, day is asking us, the days uh, are very difficult. One day these uh, fuels will get over. So that's why we must use the CNG, the compressed natural gas. And this is environment friendly fuel. It will not pollute the environment. And this is the CNG vehicle. And this is why we have to use the CNG so that we don't depend on the other fuels like petrol and diesel. We must take some other safeguards also. Other than CNG, some other safeguards also we must uh, take. Uh, like we, we have to uh, see to our vehicles that they are properly serviced and pollution checked at regular intervals. So this air pollution is why because our vehicles are not serviced properly, not being done uh, in a proper way and that's why it emits the harmful gases and pollution is created in the environment. So we have to do at regular intervals in between in a year or in a, twice in a year we have to get our vehicles checked so that we control the pollution. So not only using CNG is sufficient but even to uh, help the uh, environment not to get polluted we have to get our vehicles properly serviced and this is how this check is done. The vehicles are sent to these service centers and these people come to our uh, neighborhood also to get the uh, vehicles properly checked. We must use public transport system to reduce traffic on roads. Instead of going every now and then by our own vehicles, we must use the tra public transport so that uh, the traffic is not much on the road to so control the traffic on the roads we should use these um, public transport like taxis and auto rickshaws and many more um, public transport like buses so people should take care of all these if all of us get together then we can control the traffic but people don't bother about thinking of the environment and also of the danger that is occurring. If we control the vehicular pollution, we would lead a 
healthier life if we see if this control uh, this is controlled pollution is controlled then our life will be very healthy we will be without any health issues we will be fit and nice and good health healthy life we will be leading so be um, the person who is going to control the vehicular pollution if we are the ones who are the first to do it let it be let us uh, start give it a start but seeing us others also will learn that how we must control the pollution and what all measures we should take fossil fuels are formed from the decomposed remains of plants and animals buried deep in the earth's crust for millions of years ago you see millions of years ago these um, animals and plants got buried inside the earth's crust and uh, they formed it, uh, they are formed in the form of what oil coal and natural gas so you see the uh, oil and coal these are the natural gas which we are getting it's because of the decomposed remains of plants and animals and we are using it as fossil fuels but one day these fossil fuels will get over will get finished so that's why we have to think about different measures how we must control them and what else we can use the early vehicles used steam energy that was produced from boiling water you see this is the steam energy the coal is burnt here and then here this water is there it used to get boiled and then that boiling wa uh, water used to produce steam and through the steam uh, the engine used to work and this is how the wheel used to work and this is uh, the this was the way how the steam uh, engines moved on the tracks then fossil fuels like coal and later petrol came in use then coal and petrol also came in use they are non -renew renewable as they cannot be used again so we cannot use these uh, again and again it is getting over and that's why we have to think about other alternates therefore we should use renewable sources of energy more solar energy wind energy etc so these are the energies we should use more instead of using the fossil fuels we must conserve the use of fossil fuels otherwise they will disappear from our earth so you see these uh, will disappear very fast and that's why to in order to um, not uh, be disappearing from the earth not to make it disappear from the earth we should use other alternate like solar energy and what wind energy so if we use solar energy we are going to say uh, save, save our fossil fuels story of petrol if you see the petrol story you will come to know you read your book and you will uh, come to know that the petrol that we use that has a lot of effect on the price of our commodities that we use the petrol gets expensive and the commodities that are in the market to be sold all get uh, means uh, expensive so we are going to see the story of petrol deep wells are dug in certain areas on the earth to take out petrol so on the earth in the seabed deep wells are dug from underground the oil is extracted and brought up and when it is brought up then it contains a lot of impurities and is known as crude oil so when we bring it up that time it has a lot of impurities like water particles sand all these things are in it and that time it is known as crude oil immediately we don't use it so that's why it has to be purified it is sent by tankers to the oil refineries so by tankers it goes to the oil refineries from the you see but it is filled in the tankers 
from there and then uh, it goes to the oil refineries then from the oil refineries where it goes to the petrol then it is supplied to petrol depots by trains and trucks so either by trains or trucks it is supplied to the petrol depot from petrol depot the petrol is supplied to petrol pumps and all these petrol pumps get the petrol after it is purified in the oil refineries all vehicles have engines so every vehicle which is moving it is have it is having an engine when we put fuel in the vehicle the fuel burns in the vehicle when we put the fuel it burns inside the engine and produces energy it produces energy and this energy helps the vehicles to move there are different types of engines to run a diesel car we need a diesel engine and to run a car on compressed natural gas that is cng we have to fit a cng kit in the car so this is the cng kit in the car we have to fit this kit then only we it becomes a cng uh, engine and this one this is the diesel engine we have to fit this diesel engine in the diesel car or buses or trucks do you know all means of transport have some advantages and some disadvantages you are using the means of transport every transport that you use whether whether it is airways or waterways or railways or roadways all are having their own advantages and disadvantages but the best means of transport are walking and cycling so walking is the best means of transport and even cycling best means of transport these are why because they do not depend upon fuel and keep us always fit so that's why they are called the best means of transport we will be fit if we walk especially when we have to go to nearby places we must walk and go or if we are having a bicycle we must go cycling so children this is the end of the lesson i hope you have understood well and you will do everything nicely you will send me all the exercises after completing on time and in the uh, work what you do it should be done in good handwriting and please keep learning all the time so that you don't uh, have to have trouble when you come to school later on so stay home stay safe always if you are going to take care about this staying in the house washing your hands and all those things then you will stay safe so thank you children for listening and being good so be happy and cheerful always i will meet you in the next lesson so bye for now